can you confirm that you can see the the slides? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so so let's start. People will join. <laughs> anyway, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Tarif Al Bakr speaking to you, uh, and uh, want to welcome you in today's session about you know uh, how to architect uh, your API integration in in Azure. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, just uh, because I can see there is some new names to me, let me introduce the whole uh, Azure Kuwait uh, user community. Uh, Azure Kuwait is a community group to gather developers and technology uh, enthusiasts from around the Kuwait and uh, you know, who's interested in Azure.net, uh, open source, you know, technologies in general. Uh, we we started the whole thing maybe a year back. Now, and due to COVID-19, we started, you know, making the sessions online, which uh, I think it's it's much better in, in another way, you know, because it brought to us, you know, some people, you know, outside even Kuwait. Uh, which uh, it is something we always welcome. So this is a timeline. We I started the whole uh, you know community in July uh, 2019. The first maybe uh, I remember the first uh, meetup was in September. So it have been you know a full year. So thank you all for all the support. You know all the support from Microsoft. Uh, it was a wonderful, uh, you know, year and uh, quite, uh, you know, experience. Uh, we are a member of the Azure Tech Communities, which is uh, sponsored by Microsoft. Uh, on Meetup, we have more than three, uh, 370 members, and we made uh, more than, you know, 10 Meetups till now. Uh, this is a brief about me and myself. You know, I'm Tarif Al Bakr. I'm, I am an IT enterprise architect in Kuwait Finance House. I have more than 10 years of experience, uh, most of them in the banking sector. Uh, I already an Azure architect uh, expert. I have some uh, badges, you know, from Microsoft, which is the Azure Hero, the com content and the community badge badges holder. Um, some of the certification I have, as I said, uh, Azure Architect Expert, TOGF9, Certified, Agile, and so on. For anyone who wants to contact me, this is my LinkedIn and Twitter uh, you know, accounts. Okay, so let's start. So uh, let's start today our talking about, you know, how we used, you know, to, let's say, uh, we call it how we used to build our products or our softwares or services. So in, in the old way, we used to start from scratch, you know, gather the business requirement maybe and uh, build, you know, what we call it, for example, a product or a service and, and so on. We'll come and do the whole cycle again and again in a monotholic, you know, way and so on until we have a complete portfolio and so, especially in the enterprises you know that it uh, how it was you know uh, you have multiple products most of the time these products will have similar inside them so you are repeating the things uh, in a way uh, the, the things got evolved with, uh, you know, some of the architecture patterns like SOA and so on. And till we reach, you know, this, uh, let's say, uh, uh, we reach this stage where we have the microservices and, uh, you know, architecture. So the modern way, you have like an ABI catalog, okay? And each of these shapes you can will represent maybe a service or a microservice, whatever you want to call it, call it. And you'll start, you know, having your products, which is actually 
the channels or the, the product will be actually just a nice, you know, representation or a UI. Uh, it can be a web, uh, it can be even a desktop application, it can be a mobile, whatever. And till we reach, you know, you have the complete portfolio. So this is how, how the enterprises, you know, uh, start doing this. But with this, we, we face some challenges, you know. How can I know or discover the AVIs, especially when you have, even if, even if it's within, you know, the same enterprise. Uh, most of the time, you know, the enterprises, you have multiple teams. They are maybe uh, in geographically, they are separated. Uh, so, you know, to discover the AVIs and know about them, which one is availability is a challenge. Onboarding, you know, to start using these new AVIs, it's another challenge, the security monitoring and the life cycle of the whole APIs. To overcome all of these challenges, today we will talk about the API management. So Azure, you know, provide one, one of the very nice, you know, features or services is called the API management, which can, you know, control all your uh, API, as we said, the whole challenges can be overcome within uh, using this uh, this service. And your back end can be anything from another, you know, uh, Azure services, as you can see, or even, you, you know, uh, as any API, you know, you are publishing from your uh, uh, back end uh, on the premises. Yeah. So, the being that uh, or uh, after we said this uh, we can define um, the api management is as a, a way to create a consistent and modern api gateway for existing back-end services which will help the organizations to publish the apis for sure to external partners and even internal you know developers and teams to for sure unlock you know potential and you know uh, and have you know, their catalog published uh, for, for their, you know, partners. Uh, the API management uh, gives, you know, a lot of things, you know, these are some of the benefits you will, will, you, you will have. Uh, first of all, the API documentation, which is once you add an API, you will, uh, you will have, uh, it will be documented automatically. Uh, and we will see this. Uh, you can, you know, rate uh, or, uh, you know, put some limitation on the access, uh, health monitoring, modern formats, you know, like JSON uh, or whatever, like uh, XML, connection to any API you have, analytics for sure, and security on top of all package. Uh, the, the the api management in in that case will become you know like your enterprise hub for all your apis and consists of three main let's say components you will have the publish or or the azure portal where you publish as a, a publisher of the apis uh, and there is the you know the gateway which will be the mediator in that case and there will be the consumers, which are, you know, the app uh, developers. So for the bubble, you know, it will give like uh, an abstract, you know, they can uh, publish their APIs and it will put like an abstraction and it will secure it. Uh, they will have some maybe um, monitoring tools. Uh, they can version even the APIs. They can even monetize, you know, the, the, the APIs. Uh, in case you are, you know, providing some services and you want to, to make money from them. And for the consumers, they can discover, learn, uh, on board easily and uh, get support, you know. Okay, let's start with the first demo. Okay, I will just let me bring. Okay, I think I have to bring this. So, uh, this is the API management uh, service. 
I already provisioned uh, provisioned one uh, because um, most of the uh, you know the ABI management ser service tiers would require a lot of time you know to to around maybe from 30 to 45 minutes to to be provisioned okay because there is uh, it seems a heavy you know uh, uh, infrastructure behind it except maybe for one um, let's go and show you this uh, ABI say except for one tier which is the I think the consumer just want to show you so it's so we have here pricing tiers uh, all of these will take some time and for sure the, the pricing will, 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 will be different uh, you have the consumption which is uh, based on uh, 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 on a serverless you know uh, you know architecture and it will be on a microservices. This will, all, most of the time, maximum it takes five minutes to, to be provisioned. But unfortunately, you will lose some of the nice features if you are using it. Okay, so I created one uh, for the, on the developer. Okay, and uh, let's see that. I think, yeah, I have to. So I'll go back. So what we have here, normally you can have, you know, your uh, telemetry, it will tell you about the gateway errors, if there is any errors or something. Uh, you have a section called uh, APIs, which is the most uh, important one. Uh, it will tell you how can you uh, add a new API. You can start from a blank or from scratch. You can use one of the most common, you know, uh, standards, which is the Open API, which used to be called Swagger. Waddle, Waddle. Uh, you have even, you know, some of the native uh, services in, uh, you know, in Azure, like the app service or the functions. So let's try to import one. Okay. So I will say, Open API because the one I have it's a okay in Open API standard. I just put the you know the, the URL and I will say tab and immediately if you can see here you can see immediately the display name and the name came because you know the Open API uh, Open API specification gives you that and you can change it for sure. Uh, I will say create. Take some time. Okay. Very good. Um, then this, okay. So you can see here uh, we have some some tabs. One for the design, one for the settings, testing, revision, uh, change log. We will talk about most of them. On the left side here, the most left side, you can see all your APIs. I currently have multiple APIs. This is the one we just added, the demo conference. Uh, operations we have, we have some, most of them, they are Git, uh, you know, Git uh, operations. One is, is a post. Uh, the gateway works in, a, in, you know, the pipeline for it. Uh, you have multiple layers, the front end. Then you have the inbound processing where you can and you see during this uh, session how we can apply some policies, do some limitations on the, the number of calls we can receive. Uh, you have the back end also where we you will retrieve the, you know, or call your end, uh, endpoint services. And while you are returning the even the, the response, you can do some modification here also uh, at uh, the outbound processing. So this is the pipeline in, 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 in general. So let's go to get speaker, for example. And we can go to the test. Uh, and 
out of the box, I can say, OK, I need the first ID, the first uh, one. And I will say send. And I get the response. This is the response. Uh, if I go to the trace, I can see how long it took. You know the the, the request. You know to finish. It's within seven twenty seven hundred twenty milliseconds. And we'll see how can we reduce this. Uh, okay. So another thing when you provision the uh, what you call it the APIs, you will have something very nice, which is the developer portal. So let me show you the developer portal. This is out of the box. This is the vanilla you will get and you can customize. It. Now I, I'm logged in as an admin. I can customize the whole, you know, interface. This is will be the developer site for for your partners or anyone wants to you know uh, start using or learn about your API as you are publishing uh, it is very nice you can see it's a modern you know design uh, you can do anything you want for example you can change the you know the, the links put whatever you want uh, but honestly I want just to let's Login as a okay because I'm authenticated now. Okay, I'll, I'll try another browser. Uh, I think I have. Yeah. And I'll show you something here. Okay. For sure, you have to publish it first. I already published that one. And you can see that now I can uh, sign up, explore the APIs. Let's explore, you know, before we sign up. So this is, uh, you know, the APIs I already published. The, the most recent one, it's not showing uh, because I didn't add it to a product. Uh, with, and this leads us, you know, to, to define what is the product. So the product in general, it's like a, a virtual representation of multiple APIs or or your APIs. For example, um, let, let's see what we have here as a product. We have two products. We have something called starter and we have unlimited. So the starter is uh, what, what is defined. This is out of the box it comes to you. You can remove them, you can, you know, uh, redefine them. It's up to you. But normally the starter is just to onboard the or let your customers or developers to try the APIs and it has some limitation that it cannot, uh, you know, accept uh, more than five, let's say, uh, requests within a minute. And uh, I think 100, uh, the, the policy is there, 100 uh, requests within, I think, a week or something like that. You can change all of these. Yeah. So uh, why the new API didn't show? Because I didn't add it to any of these products which I published. You can see here the APIs which are already uh, the starter. And here, uh, who can, you know, uh, access them? So I can add a new API. I will say these already, you know, uh, added. I will add the demo. They will say select. And and also I will add it to the unlimited. And let's see. Let's see if that worked immediately. And I can let's refresh. Yeah, we can see it. See very quickly, very efficient. There is nothing you need to do. Just a single, you know, click. So. If we click on the on the API, we can see a full uh, list of all the operations we have. Uh, we can see, you know, the the API definition in Open API three, JSON or two, what or whatever. So if I choose like this, okay, it will download that uh, Waddle for me. 
So, and you can even try it if you have a subscription key. And how you can get the subscription key, as we said, subscribe. So before you subscribe, you have to sign up. Uh, I have already, I already signed up. The sign up is, is, is very easy. Uh, you define, uh, let's show it to you. You just put your email, password, confirmation, first name, and based on the product you are subscribed, uh, this is just for signing up. After that, you will receive an email and you will uh, confirm your uh, identity or the email. After that, you can sign in. So, I think. Um, and the password was. Put it that one right. Do Just a second. Let me try again. Oh, okay, I, I'm logged in. Weird. Anyway, this is my profile, and you can see that I already have two subscriptions already. So I have a subscription for the starter product and, and the unlimited. It depends on the, you know, admin who, who uh, uh, or define the products. You can, like the starter is auto enrollment. There is no need for approval. And for the unlimited, uh, no, it will require like, a, you know, an approval. Once it's approved, your the status will be uh, active. You will have the keys. OK, no need to show them or use them because once you go to the API section again and you choose whatever you want, let's say get speaker and you say try. Automatically it will come for you. OK, so I will use the starter. And I will say I need one. And OK. So this is the response as you can see so very easy very you know elegant way you know uh, everyone can learn about it you can even once you are already uh, start using the abis and uh, your uh, let's say uh, uh, applications start you can start seeing even you know a nice uh, report like this uh, how many calls from where in the world? Okay, all the request came comes from Kuwait currently. <laughs> That's why it's not showing that much on the on the map. Uh, see how many call for by products. These are out of the box. You can get them, you know, straight away. Uh, by operation, the total calls, average response uh, time, and so on. Okay, I think uh, uh, this is the first demo. Let's go back to the uh, okay. So the next challenge, you know, comes maybe in your mind. Uh, for sure, our APIs will will get evolved. Uh, you know, with, uh, within the time, you know, uh, we will add more features. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll change some of the APIs. Maybe we'll have some even, we call it uh, a breaking uh, uh, changes. So how to version all of this? So first, maybe the first question will come to your mind. Uh, do we need to version or not? Um, even if we want to version, what versioning uh, mechanism we'll use? A semantic versioning or something else? Uh, are we going, you know, uh, what we will do in case we have a breaking change? Uh, where to place version information? Are we going, you know, to put it in the path of the of the URL? Uh, is it in the query uh, in the query string? Is it in the header? Oh, and the other thing, how to identify the version, <laughs> as we said, is it semantic? Is it uh, a number? Is it a date? Is it uh, a name? 
all of these pop up, you know, immediately. So uh, the API management approach for versioning is, it doesn't, you know, uh, go for one approach uh, over the other. You know, it gives you all the flexibility, uh, all of these things you can use uh, based on your preference. So uh, it is natively understand versioning. Uh, the version uh, is an opt-in. It's not by default enabled uh, because maybe your case doesn't require the, you know, uh, having a versioning. Uh, there is offer, uh, we offer, they, they offer, you know, also uh, a scheme, uh, a scheme options for versioning and you will see this. Uh, it will inform the developers immediately about the changes you are doing on the uh, on the APIs and there, there, there will be a new uh, version uh, for the, your APIs. And for sure it controls when the changes get adopted. This happens with two mechanisms introduced by the API management. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, we have something called revisions and we have versions. So what's the difference? Uh, basically and in short, uh, revisions are, you know, the providers choose when to deploy them and the versions are for the consumers when to, you know, adopt the new version. Uh, next slide maybe and the demo will give you a better, you know, understanding about it. So this is the normal, uh, maybe, uh, let's say, a URL you have. Uh, you will have, for example, your uh, uh, you'll paste a URL like example.org, then you'll have the API, then you have the operations like speakers, sessions, days, whatever. After that, if you are introducing the version, versions and revisions, you will have the following. You will start having, for example, a, a version like V1 or V2, uh, and uh, the consumers of your APIs are, you know, uh, uh, they have the the choice to use one of uh, of these versions, you know, uh, based on how how, how you. Do. In this case, uh, the and you have the revisions. If you can notice here, we have four revisions, uh, two in pale green, which means they are not uh, active, or they are offline, and we have two online. And the one which is in rectangle, this is the only one which receive uh, calls. Uh, this will give you uh, a flexibility, for example, for you as a publisher, maybe if you want to, to do some changes and you are not sure if you are going to break something or something, you can start a new revision from the same version you have. Try it out. After, if you are satisfied with that, it will be a current Verge uh, revision, so everyone will will start be using it normally. Uh, if you don't, you can just take it offline again. Uh, and whenever you you are confident that you want to move to a totally new version, which have maybe uh, you know introduce uh, like changes or break break changes uh, breaking changes, you can move to a new version. Other demo. Today we have a lot of demos, guys, so bear with me. Uh, let's see what we have today. Okay, so I'll go back to the APIs. Okay, and I will go to the demo. And uh, let's see what we have to... Uh, so as you can see here, let me just zoom in. I am already in in I like this. Okay, I'm already in in revision one, which is by default. Once you create an API, you will you will start with revision one. Okay. So if I want a new uh, revision from this, uh, I can simply say add revision. Okay. And I can give it a description. Let's say we want to add uh, something called get 
uh, conference notes. So conference on rev. Okay. We'll create. This will create like a, a replica of my uh, you know APIs. And if you can see here now I'm in revision two. Okay. Uh, also, the drop down list will tell you uh, that you are already in two and you can delete it. This uh, symbol, you know, of connecting, that means this is the current revision which, you know, accept, you know, uh, uh, the connection from the outside uh, world. So let's say that we want to introduce uh, a new operation. And I already have uh, like a uh, you know the design already done and we know that there will be like a, an ABI called get conference so I will say but let's assume also let's make it uh, a little bit you know uh, difficult you know let's say that the development didn't finish yet and I want to publish it somehow uh, for my consumers to start you know learning about uh, this uh, new operation. The specification known that, for example, uh, it's a git uh, operation, you will receive a JSON file uh, or say a JSON response, uh, and that's it. Uh, so I will show you how can you mock uh, a response, even if your backend API is not yet uh, finished, which can even, you know, uh, speed up, you know, the development uh, process uh, by the third party, you know, consumers. So I will say it's a get conference. OK, I will copy the URL. OK, I will say the request. Uh, sorry, the response. I will add the response. OK, you will add 200. Is it clear or uh, I, I have to maximize the, the, the font or something? Tell me. OK, so I, I will I will just uh, simulate the 200 uh, response, which is uh, the OK HTTP. And I will say uh, the content will be application as a JSON. OK. Uh, so let's let's have say notes and as this okay and i will save so you can see that now that we have the get conference if i search by Git conference, I, I can see one. Let's go back to the to revision one. Okay. We don't have the operation, you know, no operation display. As we said, because I took, you know, a copy of that revision one, then I worked on the revision two. So they are totally separated, you know. Let's go back to revision two. And now to mock uh, this one, I will just click on on the, the operation because I was already on the all operations. You can specify policies on and you'll see the policies within maybe, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, you can define these policies on multiple scopes. You can put them in the whole APIs. You can on specific operations. So for this one, I will just add a new policy and I will say mock response. Before that, let's let's show you. I will show you why I will do this in the inbound because if I go here and say test. OK, and OK, and say send. I will receive an you know, 404, you know, because it's not there. OK, but if I mock it here, OK, I will mock the 200. And say this will will mock the back end. 
you know so it will not it will not make the the, the request goes to the back end immediately it will response back with the one i just created in the when i created the the, the operation so if we test it it should work yeah and if you can let's zoom oh sorry this is how we zoom if you can see we have notes this is a mock notes okay is it clear anyone oh no wait. okay so if I go now back to revisions here, uh, you can see that I have something called online and I have current. So this one, uh, okay, I'm new to this too, which zooming. So I get the, so uh, the, the URL here, it's a little bit different. And I will show you in a minute uh, how, how it is. Let's let's back, go back to the test and do this. If you notice here, uh, we'll go and see how it contains, you know, rev a rev equal to inside. So you can use this one just to test, you know, the things which is in, in Rev2. Okay, let's go back to revisions here. As you can, I can just say, uh, take it offline, and I can take it offline if I want. Okay. Uh, so let's take it online again and I will make it the current and it will ask you uh, to post something to the public change log. Uh, I will say introduce and we call it introduce get notes uh, operation. Okay. Tab. Let's go back to our consumers here. If we go back to the APIs, how do we know immediately about these changes? Yes, it is there. Yeah, we can see the Git conferences. It shows you know the the mocking. Uh, if I go to the change log, I can see you know the change log, what have been changed even. Imagine if you want to do this while well, you have multiple APIs and you don't have like a, you know, uh, management uh, to do it. It will take you ages maybe to to run. And you can see someone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the for the comment. Uh, okay. Uh, now let's say that we want to make a new version from the from the demo conference I will go here and they say I want to add a version and uh, it will ask you to to give it a version you can say v2 uh, it will ask about how's uh, how the version uh, scheme will be as we said we have three out of the box we have you can use the path, the header, or a query string. So I will say that we will have V2. So it will add it to the version. So you'll have the base uh, API, uh, or the, sorry, you know, the base URL, then forward slash V2, then forward slash your operation will, will, in that case. You can associate this, I will associate it with two products we have. Uh, if I change it to the header, uh, it will ask me what will be that custom header uh, name will be. So I would say, for example, ABI 
version. Sorry, if I can skip version. <laughs> okay, so I have to specify it in the header as following, but this will not change, you know, uh, you know the the URL. Or even I can put it in the query string. And also it will ask about the query uh, string parameter. So I can say also uh, version. So it will be like this. Uh, there is no right approach. All the approaches have a pros and cons. It's it's up to you. It's a decision you have to, to make. Uh, for the time being, let's say that we'll stuck with the path. Okay, and uh, I will say create. Uh, version uh, what invalid name? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I will say just V2. Okay, fine. Thank you. Sorry. If you can notice here, we have now two, uh, you know, versions. The first one, which the, uh, will be the original. The second one, which I called it just V2. Uh, it will it will show. Let me just uh, tell you something. Uh, these two versions, uh, in theory, you can just in version two remove all these operation, and maybe uh, link to a different backend with different operations. So there is no linking between them. Uh, but in, in, in normally you will not do this. Yani. That's why they said normally the versioning will introduce maybe a break, uh, breaking changes. So this is uh, how we, and if we see the, the URL here in the test, for example, let's take this one and I can see. Um, this is the version two. Uh, let, let me, sorry, I want to show you to you there and the uh, portal. Okay, so let's go back to the ABIs. If you can see, we have now two uh, ABIs, the first one and the version two. So if I go to the version two, it's the same thing. I can see the version, you know, change log. If there is a change log there, but we didn't put anything. So it, it is as simple as this. And see here, uh, this is what I want to show. This is the, v, the V2, which is introduced in the in the path. If we go back to the, v, the original, there is no v2 introduced and this is how your consumer can you know uh, target a specific version till they adopt you can tell them that uh, now we introduce version 2 and you have maybe uh, let's say three months six months it depends uh, how long you want to wait before we uh, deprecate you know or remove the version one and this will give them, you know, some time, you know, to adopt with the new uh, ABIs you introduced. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay. Uh, as 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 we also, you know. Uh, we are doing some management and. Uh, Within these management, you know, having versions or uh, and revisions, it's not the only uh, case we are facing or the or the only challenge we, we face. Um, sometimes we have some challenges that uh, we don't want anyone, you know, to abuse our APIs. Uh, so we want to, do, for example, uh, limit the number of hits we receive, especially if someone is just uh, uh, subscribed maybe to to uh, to a product or just to try it you know normally any any service provider when they give you their apis maybe they will give you like a free tier where you can have small number of hits uh, to to not uh, overwhelm you know the the back end uh, 
so this is one of the challenges, you know, uh, sometimes you need maybe to, to do some caching uh, because your back end, uh, you know, the response from the back end will not change that much and you want to uh, make the performance better. Uh, and uh, sometimes maybe you need to do some authentication and uh, and to do some uh, checking before you process, uh, let's say, uh, and authenticate your, your consumers. And we see all of these uh, within the demos uh, following from here and from, from this slide. Uh, uh, all of this can, most of these challenges can be addressed by using the API management policies. So the policies, uh, we just saw one of them, which is the mocking, uh, which is encapsulate a common API management uh, functions. As I said, it's, uh, for example, access control, protection, transformation, even of the, you know, the, let's say from the response. Uh, it's already built in within the pipeline. Okay, it uh, changed the context uh, or change the API, API behavior. Uh, as we can, uh, as we will see, we'll, it can be put in the inbound or the outbound directions, and even we can trigger it if an error happened, uh, and we can put it in multiple uh, scopes. So. What is the scopes or the policy scopes? Uh, in the API management, we have uh, four uh, main uh, scopes. We have the global, we have the product, and the API and the operation. Okay, so this is from the outer side, you know, the global from its name, it's the global. And within that, uh, a subset will be the product because you can have within the global multiple products. And within the product, you have the ABI, and within the ABI, the operation. So this dotted line or dashed line is, uh, you know, uh, the separation between the inbound and the uh, outbound. So normally, uh, for example, we will have some policies normally, like the cross uh, origin or the logging will be normally on the on the global. Uh, layer uh, on the product, you can maybe put something like. Uh, how many uh, uh, calls can be, you know, this product uh, receive within a certain time of uh, certain time in total. The rate is just how many calls within a specific time. For example, even if you are giving a big quota, like uh, let's say 100,000 uh, call, but you don't want maybe to receive uh, the 100,000 within a minute. Maybe you, you need just, uh, you want just to receive uh, 10. You can put that as a, with the rate uh, policy. Within the API, you can introduce something like uh, the JSON web token, uh, for, you know, for uh, security purposes. Uh, and the operation, you can do some caching, URL, uh, maybe modification, do some modification even to the body of the, of the operation. So, in case uh, sometimes, you know, most of the time, you'll have something like this. Uh, let's say the foo, you know, forward slash par, you know, and this is your host, and this is the key because, as we said, uh, every single uh, call should be associated with a key. Okay, and the key is essential to determine which product. And uh, it will, once the product is, you know, associated, we can know uh, if you are subscribed or not, uh, if you are, um, you, know, you know, exceeding the quota or the rate and do all of these things. So the key is associated with the product. Uh, the ABI, for example, will be associated here from the, you know, the URL you're, you're sending. Uh, this is the operation. Sorry, and this is this is in general how how the scopes works. Uh, now to define the policies, there is some uh, what we call it policy expression. So the policies are formed uh, uh, as individual statements uh, and executed in order. Okay, uh, it's uh, an XML structure. 
as you can see here, uh, and contain some elements, you know. Uh, so this is the whole section of policies. As you can see here, we have the inbound policies, we have the back end, the outbound, and in case of errors. Uh, there is something called a special tag called the base, which means that uh, the upper scope policies will be uh, will be executed in this case before uh, do this uh, uh, policy. This policy is normally just checking the header for uh, for uh, for an, for a header named authorization. If it is not there, it will return, you know, uh, a 401 HTTP code, uh, okay, and the message will be not authorized. And also in at the outbound, it will uh, convert the JSON uh, response which received by the backend to an XML, maybe because the, you know, the consumer is expecting an XML. So let's have a demo. Okay, let's go back. Uh, what we have? So, okay, I will go to the something. I I have some uh, uh, a back end API is called uh, Board Gaming API. It has only one operation, which is get the price uh, estimation. Uh, let's say the use case here that you are uh, a manufacturer for uh, board games like chess, you know, Monopoly, anything like this. And, uh, you know, your retailer, you know, wants to or give you orders, you know, to manufacture these boards uh, on custom. So you have this uh, ABI where they provide the shipping code, let's say USA and the game, which let's say chess, and they will define the height and width of the board. So let's say by centimeters, let's say, so it is 50 by, sorry, by 50. And if we say send, the back end is sleeping. <laughs> okay, so, Let's see here. So we received the following, which is okay. The board type is chess. The estimated price is a hundred dollars, for example. The shipping code is USA. Got it prepared at this time. Okay. Let's go back to the trace. I can trace the whole. So if you can notice, it took very long time. You know, around six minutes you know, to, to finish, okay? And here you can see a full uh, traceability, you know, how, how, how long it took in the inbound, how long it took in, okay, there's the API inspector here, the back end, you know, so if you can notice that most of the time, it, it you know, the back end was, it seems, uh, has a problem, so it takes uh, around five minutes, five uh, seconds, sorry, for, from the back end, and so on. And here, the outbound, how long it took, you know, to process from the outbound pipeline, you know. Uh, I will... Since it takes that much of time, uh, and we know from a business perspective that uh, these prices, since they are coated, uh, they will not change that much frequent, you know, maybe every week they change the prices. Uh, and it's not harm, you know, to cache the output. So what we can do, let's say that we want to cache. Uh, what we can do? Uh, I already created, uh, let me show you first. Uh, okay, this is the dashboard. I created a, a Redis cache, okay, for anyone who's uh, familiar with uh, Redis. Uh, so I created this uh, one also in Azure. And I will now try, uh, it's uh, within the, this is one of the capabilities uh, the API management has that it can integrate with uh, Redis, you know, uh, out of the box. So I will just go to 
a section here called external cache. And I will say add. And I will say, OK, I have already my uh, Redis uh, cache showing. Once I, I select it, it will put the connection string, everything for me. And I will say save. So it's already there. So now our API uh, management already, uh, you know, uh, connected to uh, a Redis cache. We can use this Redis cache whenever we want. So I will go back to the APIs. I will go to the board. Uh, okay. Oh, it's already there. Uh, I don't want to, to put it. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's remove it. Okay. So this is in normal. What I will do, I will just say add policy. Okay. Sorry, I have to say because I didn't say that one. I removed it. Okay, save. Save. Okay, so now it's removed. Okay, so I will say add a new policy. I will say uh, cache lookup store. For how long I want to cache it in seconds, let's say just. Uh, 60 seconds and I will say save. If we click here, this is the whole policies. But what I just used is a, a nice representation, you know, of the of the whole uh, thing, you know. So I have a, I will cache it for 60 seconds. OK, and you, your cache can vary by developer, by groups, by, you know, you have multiple layers of, of caching, you know, even. So let's save. And let's test now. OK. And let's say. Yes, 50 by 50. And then say send. So how long it took? This is because the first hit uh, is around um, almost uh, one second. It's 900 something. So let's uh, let's go back and say send again. And if if we can see here, I want to show you something. Here, what happened? Cache lockup. It hit the cache, huh? but it is a mess because it's not uh, already there. So before that expires let's sorry send again 300 something i would say again okay yeah the first one has been expired it seems let me show you this it's only four milliseconds see we reduce it from one second to four milliseconds and if i go here the cache section because you have full traceability with having. You can say, see, the message cache lookup results in a hit, and it have, you know, a response back within three milliseconds, and uh, it responds back. So we didn't go back to the uh, to the back end to fetch uh, data. So this is how you cache uh, uh, what you call it uh, the response. Uh, what we have to do now? Uh, let's go back. Uh, sorry, what's that presentation? Yes. Uh, okay, so this is this was a, a very simple, you know, case. Uh, you know how 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 you can use uh, the policies uh, maybe to do some simple thing like caching uh, whenever we are just showing these features i just want you to just to try imagine if you want to implement these things by yourself how long it will take you you know to do these things and uh, compare how easy we are doing this within just a couple of clicks we are done 
which you know normally takes I don't know months maybe to implement these things and to make sure it's 100% uh, working fine without any any vulnerabilities anything uh, you know you can just achieve it within two 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 three clicks so policies you can achieve more by policies um, you can remove for example unnecessarily technical information from the api responses um, especially when the security team comes and tell you, oh, there is some sensitive data is coming in the response, you have to remove it. You can mask the URLs, you can throttle uh, the API request to prevent abuse of the APIs, as we said. And uh, I think we have another demo. As I said, today we have a lot of demos. Uh, I, I hope that you, you, are, you don't mind demos uh, before we start the demo anyone has anything to to ask before i proceed you can raise your hand or something like that anyway let's uh, proceed so here for this demo i will use uh, another abi i have which is the census data which has some sensitive data about you know the population you know the names of the of the persons uh, you know pers participated so uh, let's see for example get latest uh, the get latest one because it doesn't require any parameter and if i say send It will take time because the back end is on sleep. <laughs> okay, very good. We received something. So let's zoom here and we'll see something interesting here. Okay. Can you see this? This tells us that the back end is an ASP.NET. Let's say that our security team said, oh, come on, this is not acceptable. You should not return this information. The other thing, if you notice here in the, you know, the URLs we are returning in the response, this one and this one, notice this, this part. This is not our API management uh, URL. Our API management called Azure Q8. This is something, this is the back end actually. Uh, okay, and this is not acceptable even by, let's say, our security team saying, okay, you are exposing, you know, you know, your back end in a, in a way, although it is maybe secured, maybe there is a firewall, but still they don't want to expose this. So what we can do in this case, we'll use what policies. So let's see if policies, you know, can help us in this in this uh, thing. So I'll go to the design again, and uh, I will go to all operations because I know all operations have the same issue. And uh, I will click here on the sample for the, and I will start editing you know the policies so sorry uh, i don't and uh, okay it's the same you know because it's the same thing so i will go to the outbound and uh, let me just copy this and what i will do there is some some sort of intelligence you know don't be afraid that you don't know about it and there is a good documentation about the whole thing so you can use for the time being i will just say set a header uh, in case the header uh, is called x powered by uh, it's there delete it so this will delete the uh, x powered by which shows the asp.net so this is uh, this will uh, solve the the first uh, let's say issue uh, the second thing, uh, what we will do, we'll say, uh, please 
redirect. Uh, we'll have something here also. We'll say redirect content URLs. So this what will what it will do. Anything comes from the con in the content containing the URLs, it will replace it with the URL of the uh, Azure, uh, you know, our API management. Uh, I will say save for the time being, and you see that we have two policies here. Just for the time being, because I didn't show this. This is this is our uh, you know gateway URL. Okay, and this is the developer uh, site you can see. So let's go back and try. Okay, let's see if we can do it again and test. Okay, I will send. Let's go back. And if you can see here, we don't have we don't have it here. Uh, what we call it? The ASP.NET is not showing anymore, and these URLs are not showing the proper, you know, uh, endpoint or API management. So these two policies, you know, solve this issue for us. Uh, one more thing, let's say that we want to uh, uh, limit the rate uh, or the number of hits we are receiving uh, because we don't want anyone to abuse our uh, APIs. Uh, so what we'll do on the inbound, uh, we will put the following, I will, I will introduce something called the rate limit. So here what I'm doing that I can uh, receive three uh, calls, uh, you know, within 15 uh, seconds. If, if it is uh, or then your renewal period, you know, within the 15 seconds. If I receive more than this, you know, I will just uh, return to you know, an HTTP uh, request saying that uh, too many uh, calls. Okay, uh, the rate limit uh, also have, uh, uh, in this case, I'm just limiting the whole, uh, let's say, uh, the number of calls from everyone is using the API. Uh, there is uh, other ways, you know, you can do it. You can uh, limit the rate by subscription. So, for example, uh, for a specific uh, subscriber, you can limit their uh, number of calls. You can even, you know, uh, limit uh, the number of calls uh, by IP. So, these var variants, you know, you can do it. So, let's save and try to test it. Okay, so this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth I should receive. Okay. Ah, if we see here. For 29, too many requests. And it will tell you that try again within 10 seconds. It didn't say 15 because till we re received, you know, or it processed uh, the request. There was, uh, it seems five minutes, uh, five seconds, sorry, passed, you know. So, if I go back, now I try, it will work because uh, 15 seconds have already passed, you know. I can do this again, again, again. Yeah, see, we are receiving too many requests again. So uh, this is another way, you know, how can you use uh, the policies? The policies are very powerful tool. Uh, uh, you should use it, you know, to control, uh, you know, the access even to your uh, ABIs. Okay, uh, this will lead us, you know, to the 
other topic regarding the security and protection. Uh, as you know, since you are exposing, you know, APIs or data, uh, all of these things, uh, you know, will put another challenge, you know, to secure and protect uh, the data and the APIs. So uh, we have multiple layers. The first layer, you know, of uh, security we have on the developer portal. Uh, as um, as I mentioned, that uh, you cannot use the, you know, you know you have you have a username and password you have to create uh, on the developer side. Uh, you can use you know Microsoft account, Google account, Facebook, uh, Azure Active Directory, uh, B2C. You know also it's already supported uh, on the developer portal. Uh, for the gateway, uh, most of the time we just saw the key and how, how we have multiple keys, you know, and you'll see this. You can apply OAuth2, Open ID, Connect, Client Certificate, IB filter, and so on. And for the Azure portal for the publishers, you have the, the Azure account for sure, and the RBAC, uh, which is out of the box within the Azure portal. Uh, for the back end, you know, I need to be basic, mutual certificate, uh, IV filter, also VNet and uh, network uh, network uh, security group also. Uh, okay, for another demo. Let's go back here. Okay, so I will... For this demo, I will use the weather data. I have something called weather data here. Uh, weather data, we have something called get specific days and get to today's weather. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, this, uh, you'll just give it uh, like a latitude and longitude. So I will say 53 and minus one. And I think it should. Okay, uh, okay, I have a certificate already. Let me see. Okay, let me let me remove. Uh... That's why I wanted to test it. Okay, so here we can you can see that we received uh, you know some uh, response about uh, weather. Uh, so uh, I I just want to show you how we can create a subscription uh, or a key. Um, as you can see here are the already subscribers, uh, which uh, you know I call them Tara Demo Starter and uh, Unlimited. These are the same ones which are, you know, you can see here when I created the profile. Uh, profile. So these are the ones. So whoever, you know, uh, create a user and uh, subscribe for a product, there will be uh, two keys associated for each product, a primary key and secondary key. Okay, you can show them, you can regenerate them even without going back, you know, to the publisher of the ABI. So let's say that, and even as a publisher, you can have, uh, you can add a subscription here. Let's say uh, demo key, demo key. I don't want to trace it. And I will say it's all on an ABI. And I will use the weather. Okay, and I will save. As you can see, we have now a new uh, demo, and uh, the scope is on this API, the weather. I'll just uh, show the key. Maybe you'll not see it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, not bad, let me copy it and I'm not bad. 
Okay, so I have it. And I will try to do, because uh, I want to use, uh, I want to use, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a tool called Curl, which is already here. It's, uh, okay. So, if I, you know, specify using Curl, I just, uh, you know, hit the uh, API, which is the wither I have, and uh, I will get, you know, 401 access denied due to missing subscription key. Let's see, uh, let's say, sorry, that uh, will provide the subscription key. I will sp uh, specify it in the header. This is the key, the name, the, the header uh, attribute we are looking for. And this will work. We received, you know, the, uh, the response. But let's say sometimes this is not not uh, not enough. Maybe you want to do uh, another you know uh, level of security. Uh, so you can ask your uh, you know consumer to have uh, to you know for their certificate, and you can match the thumb uh, what you call it uh, the thumbprint of the certificate. And uh, here uh, let me show you. Uh, I have uh, a certificate I just created myself, a self-signed uh, certificate uh, dot PIM. Uh, I will use it, you know, to, to send the, uh, the request. But before that, I will do some changes to the policy to make sure that the certificate is uh, will be checked. So whether and we've got all operations and uh, we'll go to the, I think we have to add it here. Okay. We'll choose it here. So what, what I'm doing here, I'm saying, uh, whenever, you know, that I receive the context uh, of the request, this is a normal C-sharp, you know, code. Uh, check if the certificate is null, or the certificate thumbprint is not matching the one I just generated, then what we will do, we will return a 403 uh, status code saying invalid client uh, certificate. Okay, so let me save this. And I can even test it from here because I just want to show you Sure, I think yeah, it will yeah should fail parameters. So. Yeah, invalid client certificate. If you can see here, it says that. Uh, let's do it. So what we can do here and if I use the same tool which is oh sorry I'm trying just to copy the key because I want to uh, if you remember this one worked just a second. Now didn't. We cannot see the 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 response because the tool doesn't give you the 403. But you cannot see the data, you know, because it, it failed. So the only way, you know, to include the certificate. Okay, so I'm I'm saying that I'm including also a certificate. This is the type and this is the certificate. And as you can see, now I'm receiving. Although I'm I'm, I'm using in, in the first one, I used a, a valid key. But this is another way of, you know, uh, put another uh, layer of security, you know, to use some uh, uh, some certificates. 
Okay, I think this is uh, done for the demo. Let's go back. For how long? Okay, we are good. The time is good. Uh, maybe the last thing we want to talk about is the VNets and the hybrid. We said uh, uh, from earlier slide that uh, I can use, uh, you know, the API management, you know, to, uh, you know, publish my uh, internal APIs, which is hosted in Azure and even on the premises. So this will, for example, in some cases, uh, and there is a service and, uh, a ser you know, from the app services, called uh, or a uh, pricing tier called uh, the isolated, which gives you like an isolated environment within the uh, virtual network. So you can uh, natively, you know, connect to that and your gateway will be like uh, the front end uh, facade, you know, for the, for any consumer, you know. After, or even it can be in middle between, you know, the the back end, which is the isolated environment of app services, and you can have on on uh, on front of that uh, application uh, uh, application gateway, which have like a WAF uh, web application firewalls. That further, sometimes you have some cases when you want to connect to on the premise uh, data center, so you can have a VBN connection from your VNet connecting to your uh, data center, uh, so the gateway can work, you know, easily. If you have a, a very high load, uh, you can even go for uh, a better connection, which is the uh, express uh, route. Uh, which give you like a private link between your data center and Azure, uh, the, you know. Uh, another, another topic when it comes to architect, you know, for, uh, let's say, uh, scaling your, your services. Let's say your, your customers or your consumers are in Europe and North Europe. And you have a service like uh, uh, like Service Fabric or AKS. You can have the uh, the API management, and it has one unit, for example. It can, whenever you know the the number of hits increase, it can uh, expand, you know, or scale up, you know, uh, or sorry, scale out, you know, and becoming like three units. If you want uh, uh, another, you know, nice feature, which is the multi-region, you can upgrade uh, in, in some cases, let's say that you already have a, a new consumers coming from US. They can also for sure connect to your API, which is hosted in North Europe, but they will face some latency. Uh, to overcome with this, uh, you, can, you can upgrade to the premium and uh, that premium gives you a native integration with the service uh, fabric and it can give you like uh, a multi-region deployment of your uh, api management uh, and for sure uh, that one can connect directly to the same, ba uh, same back end till maybe you move uh, or have another replica of uh, the back end uh, also it can scale you know, based on the, uh, what you call it, sorry, uh, the number of requests. So, as a summary, uh, what we just saw, uh, Azure API management is a cloud-hosted turnkey for you. It works with any sort of APIs running in the cloud or even on a premise. Uh, it's uh, it provides some sort of abstraction and protects uh, your APIs, uh, promotes and supports uh, application developer engagement. So they are very easily they can engage with uh, with your APIs and can use it and they can know about all the updates. And for sure, it uh, provides some API governance, insight, analytics, and uh, you know security. 
this is uh, in case you want to uh, know about the following uh, meetups we will have. We have you can follow us on Twitter and or on Instagram Azure underscore Q8. Uh, the last thing I would like to uh, thank you all for your time today. Please scan the QR and uh, try to give us your feedback about today's session. Uh, this will help uh, me and the other organizers, you know, to provide better sessions and maybe even introduce uh, some some sessions, uh, you know, uh, addressing your concerns or your uh, your uh, your questions. These are the resources, okay, and we are open for any questions.